Namaskar to all our eminent panelists and everyone gathered here. I thank DPS Varanasi for giving us the opportunity to uh, come here and to discuss these very significant questions with people who have who share with us a passion for the arts and who have been committed to introducing arts education in various ways into mainstream school curriculum. NCF 2005 was an eye-opener, at least for me, in many ways. Um, as a performer, I've constantly been concerned about the fact that the arts are given a kind of hobby-like status in most educational institutions. It is not something that, that is discouraged, but it is not something that is actively encouraged also. And if it is encouraged, it is in the form of something that you can do when you can spare time from the most serious um, activity of learning how to qualify yourself to get the best job possible. We hope that this will be the start of a wider discussion where the experience of many, many people will be shared. Um, and with that, I think, Anish, would you like to ask the first question? While we had the recommendations, NCF recommendations in 2005-2006, uh, uh, there was uh, no concerted attempt at uh, introducing arts uh, or music education in schools. So what could be the reasons? Do you agree with this statement? And what could be the reasons for this? First of all, we have to understand the objective, uh, why we want to have, because the whole conflict, why we, uh, all of us cannot reach to a consensus for a music education syllabus which is common, because a lot of emphasis has been given to teaching rather than the enjoyment. Like, the first thing is why we want to listen to music or why we want to s we sing or dance or play. It's the basic anand ki anubhuti ke liye ye hota hai because and that is the first thing which should come but somehow or the other due to a lot of things this uh, thing has become uh, lost basically but every region every uh, state needs to sensitize its uh, you know the whole community of uh, um, schools basically and the system that okay these are the things which are as necessary as uh, you know, the sciences or the mathematics or social sciences. Is music a subject that can be taught and learned in, let's say, the CBSE? Is that, what is the current situation? Is music a valid subject, uh, the marks of which will be counted in the evaluation of a student's um, uh, performance? Is that permitted in CBSE? Do we have a subject called music? The way we know popular modern education, the sensitivities of psychosocial development of the arts just don't exist. And, and I think to me, uh, these are integral to human development. So it's not just a question of whether it should be a subject that we're looking at for evaluation, why that's very necessary, but also the need to see that why are we engaging with the arts? Are we engaging with the arts from the point of view of therapy? Is it entertainment? Or is it something central to my development as a five-year-old, as a seven-year-old, as a 14-year-old? This concept of classical music and popular music, you know, I would say that children are really immersed, bathed in the culture of the popular music. And the evolving uh, cultural situation, I think, is an interesting um, you know, phenomena that needs to be addressed by people who look at music in education um, uh, uh, in this uh, whole idea of um, what do we actually offer to them, what do we actually want them to excel in if they have to pick up a job ultimately. Do you feel that it's necessary for a body like, I don't know whether it's possible for a body like NCRT, but some sort of government body uh, to have some kind of uh, community outreach program where you uh, interact with, with the community at large and, you know, create this awareness of the necessity uh, of introducing arts education? Uh, because without that, you know, uh, otherwise you're just introducing things from the top. You introduce a curriculum, you may also introduce a teacher's training program, and then the parents don't know, because the parents realize that there's a disconnect between what you're offering at college level or university level and what you're offering at the school level. Then there's no uh, job opportunities in the real, uh, you know, 
a regular sense, nine to five job. So all these things need to be uh, worked out with the community, don't you think? We had a series of uh, workshops, one day uh, advocacy program kind of thing in Jinnai, Gohati and different places. In, the, uh, in with different states also, uh, like last week we had a meeting of different SCRTs and board, uh, different board uh, chairpersons, they came. So we keep interacting so that they can further, because uh, the, uh, now we are planning again to have a series of advocacy programs through different, uh, through EduSat also. Because uh, from through CITs, if we can interact with the, the community. The thing is, even when we organized these programs in Bhopal, Chennai, even the participation of schools was very... Because first of all, the thing, unless it comes from uh, CBSC or somewhere, if, uh, you know, that kind of a danda is there that, no, you have to do this, uh, then only the schools come. The, uh, I mean, uh, from implementational point of view, that is the thing. Even if we go for the advocacy programs and all, even the schools and teachers, uh, they think that, okay, it's arts education. You know, in any case, we are doing it. Everybody sees education as input, then I have to evaluate it. But the processes, hai, nobody wants to give attention to that. And that because uh, the engagement with the arts enables a young minds connect with science and languages much more creatively and in a more enduring manner needs to be communicated to the parents by the educators. But that thought and clarity needs to first come amongst the educators. There are very few who come with that thought and clarity because the institutions of educational learning or training don't engage with that kind of thought. So it's not that music as part of education has not, it's been there from ages and ages, okay. And any good teacher, if you go back to um, uh, Toto Chan or Gijubai Patikar, all of them have used music. So, I mean, long, long ago we had it. But it requires, um, you know, the, the principal or the leader to be actually seeing the value of it. And I really think that we shouldn't get too bogged down in getting kids to pick it up as a subject uh, and get lost in that because we have n number of instances of people actually going into say doing engineering and then after that dropping it to go and you know look at music and dance and all as a, as a career option and give it all up. So why? Because they saw their love in the little, little things. In a school, for me to hear Munni Badnam Hui in the annual function is quite common, you know, today. Or a uh, Bidi Jalaile, everybody is singing, or a student from your school is going and taking part in, in a competition on television, and they're all singing all of these songs. The parents are there, you know, waving their hands and clapping, uh, and, the, and the school is giving them leave and then fetting them when they are coming back. They are like, little heroes. How come we accept all of this when it comes from Bollywood and we cannot accept it, uh, you know, or we rather sort of build these defenses when it's not, when it's coming obliquely from some other uh, source? I think, uh, you know, children going for Indian, I, I don't approve of it, but they go for it, then they come back. Now, it's not a question of that I'm very happy that you've done this, you know, sung this silly song and got a prize. <laughs> but it is that, you know, I'm saying you've made the effort of doing all this. So I'm actually celebrating that effort rather than that particular thing. I, I mean, personally, I'm saying. And since, you know, schools are sort of recognized for the awards that they get, so then I have to tell the parents that my child went and got this award and so I'm so great, you know, kind of thing. So that is the reason. So again, I'm saying, you know, I'm being reactive to what culture actually wants from me. Yes. Culture wants you to be doing some kind of, you know, distortions and contortions with your body. So I'll say, look at my kid, he's so great, he does all <laughs> this, you know. So if, on the other hand, I should say that it's not that if they sing classical music, that we sort of run it down. See, there is a wave today, especially in cities, where music is seen as a possible source of income. Because people are seeing that there are new, new singers out in the market. And who puts, who's the mixer? Like, 
I think recently in Outlook, I mean the Hindustan Times, a little paper brunch or something that comes out, had this young girl who, uh, she must have been something in her late 20s, who has done that, um, the song in some movie, Gangs of Vasipur or whatever. And I mean, so she's just 28 and she's got these singers from somewhere, put them together, put the music. Now you'll think, what is her education in music? For her to have done all this, so, I mean, as an educator, this is my thought, that how did she at this young age have the expertise to go and choose people, put, bring it all together, do the recording, did she sort of attend any course or not? You know, so that would be the question, this is what we would tell our kids, like, what is not possible for you to do? Where is it not possible for you to go and make money? I mean, you want to make money and you want to make money in a job that you love so that you're not working, working, but you're enjoying it. Now, that's possible in life today is, I think, definitely a message. And the industry is showing again and again that it's possible for you to be in music without actually singing or playing an instrument. But there are so many other areas in that industry that you can act. But you have to have an appreciation of it and, and a year to be able to listen. And having said that, I also want to say that listening is so integral to life. And so it's not just listening for music and having a year, but just to listen to each other. You know, that is itself. Um, Many of the things that you've said have been so useful for us. It reflects some of our preoccupations and it also gives us directions to think about the future. So I just want to go back to that question and maybe have the collective wisdom of the panel reflect on um, what would be the best way to sort of at once ta you know, tap into the popular uh, knowledge that the child brings to the classroom. Uh, so we need to look at that. We need to look at multi-sensory per perception of music making so um, so this diversity has to be the catch word uh, in the curriculum i feel i mean film music has always been a hybrid form therefore it is bringing in lots of different influences i mean you can't possibly listen to a piece of music and say that this is from this region that's why i'm not going to listen to it no there is a strong undercurrent of rivalry even in the arts but I'm saying that accepting and diagnosing those and talking about them freely as we are today is the first step. And one of the dreams I've had is, is can we get this kind of music together and archive it so that it's available out there? Because as a parent, I remember when I was trying to buy music for my child that would be relevant for children to hear, that would also orient them to a variety of music and the lyrics in there, other than the you know, lovely songs that you hear, it's just not there. Uh, we've had this discussion which came about briefly uh, about uh, copyright and uh, with all due respects to to the idea of uh, the, the ethics of it and the idea of acknowledging the creator of that piece of art, uh, I think we are also increasingly becoming a society that is veering towards piracy and there's an onslaught of a lot of pirated stuff all around us. I think the first thing we need to do is to first have the will to acknowledge. I think very often, uh, unfortunately, you know, there is the, the feeling that put anything under a, a broad generic label of traditional and then you don't have to acknowledge. Um, so I think uh, even in our own understanding of how to share information, the, the will to understand that we have received it from somewhere uh, and the will to acknowledge contributors perhaps would be the first thing.